Welcome, everyone, to Let's Play Pyre. Uh, just about one of my most favoritest games from last year. Uh, let's just jump into it. We're going to start a new campaign. I'm going to go for the bottom one, so I'll remember it. Uh, the difficulties are, you know, many and myriad, uh, except for, uh, so there's, you know, reduced, standard, heightened. I will be playing on true Nightwing difficulty. Base difficulty is the same as heightened. All Titan stars are unlocked, and some must be used. Enlightenment required to rank up rescaled. Cannot load checkpoints or restart rights. Book of Rights and White Loot, fully unlocked. Slug Market Inventory, fully unlocked. Feats of Glory, introduced much sooner. Once chosen, this setting cannot be changed. May you find the freedom that you seek. I'd like to hurry text. Um, I like subtitles, so I'm going to take subtitles. No aim assist, please. We're playing on true Nightwing difficulty because I deserve to suffer. I'm very sorry to my friends who I shouted at earlier today. I got mad at video games because I hate losing. So let's lose at something else. Oh boy. Pyre is a very interesting game. A very unique game. But I won't get too into it. Not yet. Oh, hello us. That is us. The little gray thing. In, 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 in the, is that a lake? Is that water? Is that sand? I think that's water. We seem to be in a bad way. What did we do? What did we fail to do? How did we end up in this blasted place filled with ruins and imps? Well, we'll figure that out in a little while. Uh, later rather than sooner, probably. Your days in the downside brought slow, lonesome agony. Now, as you lie yielding to the elements, something rumbles into view. Three shapes emerge, each cl clad in strange attire. Anything that's highlighted in red can be uh, highlighted to bring up more information. The Downside, a vast purgatory into which the Commonwealth casts its convicts and its enemies. None have been known to return from the Forsaken Land. Italians. Masked Woman, hm, another piece of filth expelled from the Commonwealth. A proud country risen from the ashes of a fallen empire, home to a multitude of ethnic groups, founded on principles of mercy kin and kinship whose exact meanings evolved through many centuries. Masked something. See, right on schedule. What did I tell you? You told us we would find someone alive. Someday. I said we'd find someone alive someday. Just not today, I guess. But don't be glum. You know I see you frowning underneath that mask. It looks like she's breathing. Looks like she's breathing. The masked wanderers presume you are female. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm a dude. The masked wanderers presume nothing about your gender. Super enough. It seems he still is. Then stand aside. I shall send him to a better place. He's a he. Can you people just tell? Hang on. The markings on his rags. I, I think he's one of them. But look at him. He's beyond our help and we are beyond his. Yeah. Broken, starving, shaking, probably diseased. Yeah, good luck with that there, chum. See you back at the wagon, folks. Indeed. The day grows dim. You have be you have an at best an hour. Understood. It won't be long. After the others leave, the man turns towards you and begins unfastening his mask. Hello, my friend. I don't care who you are or what you did. None of that matters anymore. All of us were equal nothings here. You're parched, and he gives you something to drink. You ache, and he binds your wounds. You hunger, and he gives you some food. Little by little, it helps. There. Turns out you're tougher than you look. My name's Hedwin. Come on. Hedwin. He's one of the three masked wanderers who found you. You sense no ill intent as he helps you up and leads you to an old black wagon. Nothing like the stately vessels that paraded Commonwealth criminals through alabaster streets. Step inside. Welcome to the black wagon. Oh, jeez, this is a fixer-upper, I see. The weather-beaten wagon is as much a mess inside as out. You see the masked woman and the talkative creatures taking stock of ancient-looking books. I'm back. And with the guest. She loosens the clasps on her mask. You may call me Jodariel. And as for myself, 
The small one struggles with his mask. Jojari will soon assists him. Ow! That is to say, you may regard to me my name by my name. Rookie Greentail. Hello, train. How are you? He is the smallest yet loudest of the three masked wanderers who found you clinging to life. Such pleasant trees out of the way, the horned woman then motions to the others. She glances at you sidelong as she speaks. Can you do it? Hope so. I haven't asked him yet. What? Then what are we waiting for? Hey, Chum. Nice meeting you and all. Uh, but tell me something. Do you know how to read or what? He's asking if you are a reader. One who can derive meaning from text. Literacy has been prohibited for centuries. Those with knowledge of the old ways violate the law of the land. Over time, you managed to learn something of the old ways, in spite of Commonwealth decree. They saved my life. I will admit to them to truth. To them the truth. I know how to read, and by virtue of playing the game and being able to read the text in front of you, you are a reader. That is that is something that that like it's yeah. You confirm their suspicions. There is no trying to hide it now. Well, that glory days, because it just so happens my associates and I, we got ourselves some nice material here for someone just like you. Reader, you still live thanks to us. We ask for something modest in exchange. Open one of those books back there and please tell us what it says. Sorry to put you on the spot like this, my friend. The exiles indicate the books in their possession. Have a look. One of several such heavy, ominous volumes. The exiles you met seem very interested in them. You pick up one of the old and heavy volumes bound in materials you do not recognize. A formal welcome undersigned by the eight scribes. You, dear reader, are an exile of the downside, such as we, the eight who wrote this book of rights. That you possess it and have capacity to glean its words is testament enough to your potential. Thus, we reveal a path from the forsaken place to freedom, a homecoming in glory. The stars themselves shall be your guide, ere the turning of the year's first solstice. Seek the nearest longitude beneath the brightest of eight, as they align as shown. Arrive as a triumvirate clad in the raiments of the rites, bearing this book. Oblige the voice that tells you more. And if you want to read it in plain text, you may do that. Can I turn the page? I cannot. I can simply close the book. The book describes a complicated method through which exiles can return to the Commonwealth. The words swim through your mind as Hedwin gets your attention. Well, friend, what does it say? But then your vision starts to fade and blur. You feel your body weaken and give out. Well, damn, sucks to be us. We're awful. We go to the downside, get punked. We read, we read a book and it is too much for us. Damn. Ah. Dare you tamper with forbidden knowledge? Hell yeah. So soon after your sentence into exile. Well, it can't get any worse. Tis true what the book says. You can be free again. Perhaps not you yourself, but someone worthy of the privilege. You witness now the path toward salvation. You witness the rights. This game is pretty as fuck, the by the way. way to return to glory. Though in your case, I hardly think it possible. Yet, by the grace of the scribes, it is my duty to inform you anyhow. <laughs> it worked. So it is true. Yeah, but what now? Where did the reader go? He should be out there still. For now, we have to put our faith in him. He could abandon us. He won't. You look upon the three of them from beyond as Hedwin then calls out to you. Peter, we aim to free ourselves. We will not grow old and die on the downside. And now I swear to you, when we get out of here, you're going to come with us. But first, we need your help. Please, show us the way. Freedom. You focus all your mental faculties to do as Hedwin asks. Celestial orb and falls this is how. from the heavens when the time is nigh. And this is how you play the game. I'll skip training in a little bit, but you use left click to move. You can use right click to. Oh, I can't do anything with right click yet. Oh man, lame. I'll give you guys a 
boot camp later. It is not so complicated. You can move, attack, jump, and a few other things. But those are the main three. The others are still picking themselves up as you awaken. <laughs> well, that was something. No, mine, not us. That was our way out. <laughs> so now we just follow the stars, or what? <laughs> Supposedly. Reader, come. Let us regard the night. Jodaria leads you outside where the brooding dark of night awaits. <laughs> now, show us before the howlers catch our scent. Where shall the rites commence? Right, an ancient ritual competition through which the worthiest exiles regain their freedom. The eight scribes gave their freedom so that we may yet have ours. Seek out your destination. Oh, Andriga. Star of the Blood Mistress, an ill omen, when engulfed, which engulfed the star of the moon stag hunter. The night sky is filled with terrors. But. For now, let's fo focus on Gaul, the South Star. The South Star burns bright over a massive ridge of stone much farther than the naked eye can see. What is that? A different sort of strange creature. Hmm. 200 leagues due east, the Ridge of Gaul. The fossil remains of the serpent titan slain by Gaul Golathian yet loom over these over those living in its shadow. Concilia. I'm sorry, I thought they were describing the, the fossilized remains as being made of living shadow, and that was going to be metal as fuck. Great. And we're supposed to be there when, exactly? Very soon, according to the stars. You should be able to arrive in time if you make haste. Then we'd best get started. <laughs> well, this ought to be good for a few laughs, at least. What do you say, Jody? Jodariel turns to you, studying you. Reader, do not deceive us. Pray we make good use of our remaining time. What she means is, glad to have you aboard, chum. We're counting on you, my friend. See you inside. Freedom. The rights are the key. It's a lot to take in. The fellow exiles await for you in the wagon. Join them. And away we go. Away from this blasted place. Damn. That black wagon's got some hops. Downside Prairie. You arrive in the Downside Prairie. One of the Downside's only verdant regions. It only gets less hospitable as you press further north. There is a lack of consensus about which way to proceed. I am telling you, we ought to take the Northern Pass. I've got an associate hold up in Hollow Root. I've got to pay him a visit, besides. The northern route to the Ridge of Gold goes through a small exile encampment. Every so often, tempests come and scour away the huts and hovels, but they always crop back up. Fie on your associate. Best we head to Blooming Pool and avoid attention. The southern route to the Ridge of Gold goes through a humid area pocked with hot springs. Runoff from the sandfold means no bathing in the spring, so they're just there to mock you and get stuck in the bog while we're at it. The dispute continues as Hedwin listens for a while. What if the reader settled this? He marks the way. We get us there. If these rites are meant to test our faith, then we'd best learn to trust the reader's instincts on our path. No second guessing him along the way. Can we all live that f with that for now? Yeah, yeah sure. Us. If it's necessary. Pistalium. Then it's settled. Just point the way, my friend. The stars guide us through you. Uh, weigh the options. Hollow Root. Rookie knows someone here who owes him. Blooming pool. Jodaria thinks she could find some rare flora here. Well, if only to appease Rookie, considering he said he had to meet this person anyway, I suggest we go to Hollow Root. Blooming pool seems, I don't know, less useful, and I don't care who sees us. We're on a mission from God, basically. Er, scribes, who are basically the saints of this realm. We will learn more about them later. As you pass through the squalid little area, you hear boisterous voices coming from what looks to be a public house. Rookie stumbles forth from it, holding something in his paws. <laughs> hey, chum. Just opening up a real important exchange back there. Hang on to this for me, will ya? We'll have to drop it off when we head further north. You receive a plain parcel. You cannot tell what is inside. Certain types of luxury goods somehow find their way down to the downside. Worth 30 coin. Journey onward.
Also, this music is delightful. What is that thing? I can see what seems to be no a nose and some horns, but it does not... It, uh, that might be an, a mouth with a giant underbite, but it does not seem to have any eyes. The black wagon grinds to a stop at the, brace of the base of the ridge of gold. The others ask you to assist with making preparations for nightfall and the commencement of the rite. If you go into the black wagon, there's usually someone to chat with, and also many other things. Headwind's cooking tins. What passes for cooking supplies on the downside? Hedwin does most of it. Hedwin is donning his raiments. Intricate sigil, a symbol set in the fl wagon's floorboards. The Book of Rites describes the need for such a thing. Jody's throw rug, fashioned from a howler's hide, sends their ilk a clear message. Jodariel says, do not step on it. Jodariel's status? Nearby. Green tail family portrait, a reasonable likeness of a younger rookie with his mother and uncle. He is nearby. We got a drive imp. Creatures such as this must have been bred to push the black wagon along. A lone minstrel. A figure sits very still in the corner of the wagon. He is unresponsive, but seems to be alive. Old Raymonds. Colorful robes and ceremonial masks adorn one of the wagon's walls. The way up to the wagon's drive imp's centrifuge. Only imps could fit up there. And Aruki appears to have something on his mind. Hey, chum. I appreciate you taking us through Hollywood back there. About that. Are you certain that parcel will fetch us an adequate price at the slug market? Slug market. Crude trading posts found in the downside. Commonwealth contraband sometimes finds its way to the downside, where it is traded and sold. Surely we could have procured some sort of rare fungus had we gone the other way. Uh, much as I love the idea of procuring rare fungus there, Jody, uh, we said we wouldn't go around second-guessing our good, re good chum's decision, right? <laughs> Dario says nothing in response, but soon changes the subject. Night falls soon. Come along, Green Tail. We have much left to prepare. Huh. Roki seems to be a dog man of means. The two of them go soon go about rummaging through the raiments and the books strewn about the wagon, leaving you to your own devices. He looks a bit more noble than the rest. Hedwin seems the most bedraggled, and Jodariel has a fucking breastplate, so she's pretty badass. Let us commence the rite. Interact to begin your first true trial. What do you mean true trial? What other trial? Oh, there was supposed to be the training that I skipped. Eh, whatever. As darkness falls, your fellow exiles stand together, clad in the raiments of the rites. The preparations are set. However, everything is still and calm. Soon they grow restless. Keep telling you there's nothing here. What a bunch of idiots we are. If we traveled all this way for nothing. I don't think we did. Look up. Oh. Are you people seeing this? The burning effigies of the greater titans pierce the darkness, suppressing the delicate light of the stars above. It is an ill portent. Of that, you are most certain. Colossal monsters that once roamed the downside. The scribes together slew them, one by one, and through this forged their bonds. All at once, the titan stars have revealed themselves to you. Look upon them without fear. Behold the Titan Stars. Before we begin this rite, we must have at least three Titan Stars active. There are some Titan Stars that I prefer and some that I do not. I will go through them all now. Shaq's Six Shoulders. Your adversary shall all return from banishment when they are all banished. Uh, I will never invoke Shaq's Six Shoulders. Star of the Bone Titan. Once slain by the scribe Haub the Swallow. Unfathom Plurnes. Your adversaries each shall move up, have plus eight quickness, making them move more quickly. I can handle Unfathom Plurnes. Lord Gandroth. Your adversaries each shall each have plus eight presence, raising the size of their auras. Bialantheus. Your adversaries shall each deal an additional five damage to your pyre. Ouch. Bialantheus. I will activate Bialantheus. The Tattered Mantle. After your adversaries grasp the celestial orb, their auras slowly shrink rather than vanish altogether. I will activate the tattered mantle. The tattered mantle. Islak Astralborn. Your adversary shall be more cunning and quicker to react. Oh, I will absolutely activate Islak Astralborn. Islak Astralborn. Zilvia's Horseheaded. Your adversary shall never be banished after plunging into your pyre. Ooh. 
I'll take it. Silvius horse-headed. Archbeast Songries. At the start of this rite, your adversary's pyre shall automatically gain 30 health. No thank you. Time Singer Harn. Your adversaries each shall have plus 50% stamina to use with their abilities. I'll take it. Time Singer Harn. Endriga, the widow. At the start of this rite, your pyre shall automatically suffer 30 damage. Endriga, the widow. Donis the Locket. Your adversary's pyre shall recover up to 5 health each time they douse yours. Limless Arazek. Your adversaries each shall have plus 8 hope, making them return sooner after banishment. This is generally the setup that I'll go with. Um, just because I know things that you don't. I'm doing this for reasons. <sighs> Let's see if we can pull this off. If I fail, I will understand the true meaning of my uh, of my hubris, but I do not believe that will happen. The goal of each right is to extinguish the adversary's pyre using the celestial orb that falls from the sky. Rida, the stars align at last. You reach the ridge of Gaul at the appointed time, and your triumvirate is ready. Your adversaries in the rites this eve shall be the accusers. I didn't do it, I swear. Whose ever pyre yet burns once the other is extinguished shall step closer to freedom. Now let the rites commence. The stars are aligned and your pyre burns bright. Across from your companions appear several others, also clad in ravens. Your adversaries this eve. Everyone ready? Let's hope so. Be still. We have a visitor. The one whom she refers to steps forward. At last, the night wings grace us with their presence. The name of a triumvirate in blue. It seems your fellow exiles have assumed their identity. I see that the reports of your demise have been exaggerated after all. Even I was beginning to think you were gone for good. Nobody moves, save for the man robed in gold who unfastens his mask. Surprised to see old Lendl again? I trust you remember my face, though you must have assumed never to see it again after last time. Lendl. He's the apparent leader of the exile triumphant you encountered at the Ridge of Gold. Never had I come so close to freedom, only for you to dash my hopes. Now I and the accusers shall repay that affront. An exile triumphant clad in gold. Their leader harbors ill will for something he thinks you did. He shoves his mask back on and takes position with his comrades. It is time. From the shadows, you clutch the Book of Rites and focus on the task at hand. Oh boy. Alright, that's the aura. Anything that walks into an aura of the enemy's colors gets destroyed. Banished for a Begin. short while. You can hold right click to throw your aura. Oh crap. Later, nerd. Oh shit, I am the nerd. I'm gonna play defense for a little while. I just need to wait for my boys to come back to life. Alright. Oh no, don't come after me. Just kidding. Come on, just gotta get close. Get in there. No! Damn. Alright, so. Oh boy. This is not going well for me. No, not poorly either. Ouch. Just kidding, I'm awful. I'm a garbage man. Don't play this game with me. I will disappoint you. There we go. Woo! Oh, snap! Alright, got one of them. Just get it! Oh, I cannot jump. I am too slow. So only one person on either team can move at a time. Nice! And my goal is to get the orb into their pyre by moving, jumping, and doing things. Once a character... Have Rookie fling the orb into the pyre? How is he going to do that? He doesn't exist right now. Get away from me, you nerds! Alright, alright. No! I shall not accept defeat from you again! Hear me, accusers. Stand your ground. Let your auras boil with rage. It seems that you have flustered the accusers. 
We've rattled them. They mean to draw us out. And we'll just have to run more circles around them. Hold right click to fling the orb into the pile. Can't say that I do. So if you hold right click, you can throw the orb. Display. No one says it's the against the rules. The flames like that. You elude banishment using such tricks. I'm more partial to going in whole ham. Ow, damn it. Lindell, are you are you guys okay? Are you gonna be alright? Oh boy. Yeah, get it! No! Joe Dario! Alright, two for one. Always a good deal. Nice. Well cast. No! Damn it! Orb is flopping around all over the place. So Rookie is fast, but his aura is tiny. Ow. Which leads to some unfortunate situations. Gotcha. Get in there. Damn it! So if your opponent jumps while you jump. Oh god. Then uh, you will drop the orb and be knocked around a little bit. And that is bad, okay? Alright, going in with Jodariel. So Jodariel's aura is fucking huge, damn it. And if I play her like that, I will completely waste her talents and power. Alright, there we go. Alright, I want to score with Jodariel because I want to show off just like how much damage she does to the enemy's pyre. It's absurd. Also, Jodariel's aura is so large, she can generally simply like walk into people to defeat them. And there's like not much they can do about it. Nice. Alright, I feel confident with the Titan Stars that I've invoked. Damn, ice cold. So I'm going to try to focus on those Titan Stars for the rest of the game. Your deceit may have earned you a hollow victory, but know this. The accusers will not forget your wickedness. And when next we meet, you will rue the day. Whatever you say, Lendl. Whatever you say. The wisdom of the scribes. The exile Jodariel has gained enlightenment. We have withstood worse nights than this. Though few are strange. Freedom. All right, so I like how the experience points in this game is referred to as enlightenment. Exiles gain enlightenment by conducting the rites or from certain events. Sins of the Fallen Emperor. As he fell into the downside, Sully and Murr understood at last the consequences of his hedonistic reign, or boons of the first exile. The Fallen Emperor Sully and Murr moved past his many failings as a man, achieving selflessness in exile. Alright, so we've got long stride. After using a rush to lunge forward, Jodariel can rush again right away. Crushing heal. When landing from a jump, Jodariel briefly stuns nearby adversaries, making them drop the orb. Brazen manner. For seven seconds, after saluting her adversaries, Jodariel deals an additional ten damage to the adversary's pyre. The Emperor Mur lived for years in blissful ignorance of the disorder festering throughout his empire. And Celestial Spike. Jodariel can banish adversaries by throwing the orb at them. I would banish the stars themselves if they shone any brighter. Sully and Murr, after the Great Revelry. So, after banishing an adversary, Jodariel instantly recovers all her stamina. Sully and Murr relinquished comfort, lineage, and title, yet still cling to his life. Fierce presence. Jodariel permanently gains plus four presence, raising the size of her aura. Enduring Flame. At the start of a right, Jodariel's Pyre automatically gains 35 points. Greater Banishment. Any adversaries banished by Jodariel take 30% longer to return than usual. Those who made em enemies of Emperor Mur seldom realized it until it was too late. I'm gonna go with that Relentless Vigor. I'm gonna have a Jodariel flopping around, knocking people out. The Demon Scribe bestows his favor. And then Rookie gains some enlightenment. That's all for now. After the rites, the accusers disappear into the darkness. As you return to the wagon and then a still night sky, you see a single star burns brighter than the rest, beckoning you onward. Where to now? I should wonder. It's 
Well, my friends, what can I say? The rights are real, and we're in it. The Getting Out of Here Club. Next up on the agenda, keep chasing stars until we're free. Until we are free. Until we're free. Here, here, sounds fine. Might as well be us instead of Lendl back there. Anyway, I guess we better start backing. As the others go about their business, Hedwin turns to you. Reader, come walk with me while the stars are still out. You and Hedwin walk in silence for a time before he speaks up. You have questions. Come, ask away. We need you in on this for the long haul. What will I ask Hedwin? Find out next time on Let's Play Pyre. If you liked what you saw, hit like. If you want to continue the adventure, please hit subscribe. And if you think that what I do is really keen, you can send me a couple bucks monthly on Patreon. I can use that money to do fantastic, amazing things like make more videos, start streaming, hire an artist to do cool shit, and do the coolest thing I can think of. Play more Pyre. I'm going through the whole game on True Nightwing's difficulty. It's going to be amazing.